Here's an example where we can take one of those problems and plug in some numbers. So we have a block that has two forces, 1.2 kilonewtons acting straight down, and it looks like P equals 150 newtons, pushing it to the left. They also give us an angle here. So this is happening at 30 degrees. Find the magnitude and direction of the friction force in this case. Okay, the direction. Is it going up? Is it going down? Which way is going to win? That 1,200 pounds going down seems like it's a lot larger than the 150 newtons pushing to the left, but we're going to really need to split everything into the direction of the friction force and the direction of the normal force to figure this out. So let's go ahead and draw some lines that are perpendicular to that surface and split everything into what's going in the same direction as friction. So that tangent direction versus what is going in the normal direction. And that's going to let us know which direction our friction force would be acting in. And we also have some friction coefficients there too. So static friction coefficient and kinetic. And we can decide if this thing is sliding or not. But let's figure out what direction it's going in. Okay, so here's everything in the normal direction. And we need to chug in and see what angles are happening here too. So do you see which where that 30 degrees goes? Here's the tangent direction. So this is going to be the direction of the friction. And until we plug in those numbers, we don't know if the friction is going up or down, if it's about to slide up or about to slide down. Okay, so how does that 30 degrees map around? Can you kind of visualize it? Draw some huge triangles in and figure out where that 30 degrees is. And draw really big pictures for this thing. Add in all your forces. So the 1200 going straight down, 150 going to the left. And where is that 30 degrees coming into play? So were you able to get where that 30 degrees was? So opposite of 30 degrees, remember sine of 30 is 1 half. So we're looking at 1 half that 150 and 1 half that 1200. And if, if it's really hard to see those angles, a lot of times that's the hardest part of problems. It's figuring out what the angles are. So if you want to just give yourself something off to the side to really think through how those angles map around, that is sometimes helpful. So draw, draw a few triangles, look for 90 degree angles and angles that are adjacent to one another for how, how that's going to map out. And don't memorize this stuff be able to recognize those adjacent angles and mirroring angles for where those are. That's probably the hardest part of this is getting all of those angles right. Okay, so is our friction force going to be going up or is it going to be going down? Let's go ahead and plug in some numbers. So 1200 sine 30, that's going to be half of that 1200. So 600 going down versus 130 going up. So if we're going to add all the forces in the tangent direction and make sure that tangent force adds to zero, which way does friction have to go? It has to help the 130, right? 130 is smaller. And for it to be stationary, if it's not going to move, the friction force would have to be at least what? It's just the difference between 600 and 130, right? So 600 minus 130, that's going to be 470. So that's what would be needed for the thing not to move. Now, we don't know if it's moving or not yet. We'll have to figure out what the normal force is and then multiply that normal force 
by the static friction coefficient and see if that's big enough so that it's not going to be moving. Okay, so let's look at everything in the normal direction. So we're looking at 1200 cosine 30 versus 150 cosine 30. So we get a normal force of 1114. And now we can multiply that normal force by our friction coefficients and see if we're moving or not. So let's take the scenario where it's static first. Okay, so if it's a static friction coefficient, so that's that 0 0.35, and we can multiply that by our normal force and see if we have enough for that 470. And plug in this into the calculator, 0.35 times 1114 is going to give us 390. 390 is less than 470. So that means we don't have enough. That means it's sliding. And the actual friction force is not going to be enough to hold it up. So that huge 1200 force is pushing it down. It is sliding down the ramp and friction is fighting back with only the kinetic coefficient. And usually the kinetic coefficient is about three-fourths what the static is. So it's only holding it up with 279 and it's not holding it up. It's sliding down. So, so the force is still pushing up, but it's not pushing up enough to stop motion. So if this would be a dynamics problem where it's moving. So so you see with these types of problems, you have to kind of work through multiple scenarios to understand, is it static? Is it kinetic? Is it right on the edge? And we could have also used that angle. So remember the resultant of the normal and the friction force. So the static, the coefficient of friction that is needed to stop motion you can get that from that 30 degrees. So it would have had to be 0.58, but it's only 0.35. So that's another way to, to see if it's moving or not.